Let's see how to check if two binary trees are equal. First of all, what does it mean to say the two binary trees are equal? An intuitive way to put it would be to say that the two binary trees are equal when they have the same values and they are arranged in the same way. So for example, if we have these two binary trees, because they have all the same values, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and they are arranged in the same way, so we have 1 under root, then we have as left child 2, 2, as right child 3, and so on, that they are equal. On the other hand, if, uh, say, this tree had an extra node, an 8, then they would not be equal because this one has an extra value. Or if it had a different value, they would not be equal. Or even if they have the same value but they were arranged in a different way, so 5 and 4 would be swapped, then these three would not be equal. A more concise way to say when two binary trees are equal would be to say that they are equal when the values of the two root nodes are equal and the left subtrees of the two trees are equal and the right subtrees of the two trees are equal. So this is a recursive way to put it. Let's see how this would actually work. So we would start at the root nodes of the two trees and we'd compare them. The values are one and one, so they are equal. So then we would go on to check the left subtree. So we move to the left. Again, we check the root node, they are equal. So we move to the left. The root nodes are equal again. We move to the left, this time in both cases we don't have anything in there, so they are equal. Then we move to the right, again we don't have anything, so they are equal. Then we move to the right side of the two, to check the right subtrees, are they equal? 5 and 5 are equal, and then we move to the left, there's nothing there, then we move to the right, there's nothing there in both cases. So yes, they are equal. Then, with that we would be done with the left subtree of the whole tree, so that would be equal. In we would need now to move to the right, check the right subtree. So we would go to the right of 1. Again, the root nodes are equal in value. So we would move to check the left subtree. In both cases, there is no left subtree, so they are equal. Then we move to the right. Again, the root values are equal. We would move to the left. Again, the values of the root nodes are equal. We move to the left, there's nothing there in both cases. Then we move to the right, there's nothing there in both cases. So these two tree, subtrees are equal. Then the 6 would try to check the right subtree, but there's nothing there in both cases. So we would return true, and this would go all the way up to the 1. And once 1 verified that the right subtrees are equal, we would return true to indicate that these two trees are equal. On the other hand, if at any point we found two nodes, which were not equal, say, if this was an 8 here, once the value of the two, two nodes were not equal, we would directly return false. And so one would receive a false from the right and would return false. Or if we had an extra node here, then when we would move to the uh, right of 7, we would have here a node. On the other hand, here we would have null. So again, they would not be equal, so we would return false. And this would go all the way up the chain to the 1. So this work works even when the two trees are not equal. Because at any point where we find that they diverge, we would return false. And we would determine that they are not equal. Let's see how to actually implement this. So here we have a function r equal which takes the address to the root node of the first tree and the address to the root node of the second tree and we return a boolean to indicate whether they are equal or not. So true needs to be returned if they are equal and false if they are not equal. So the first thing we need to do is to check for base cases. So the first ca base case that we need to check is when the two root nodes are null. Because if they are null, this indicates that the two trees are empty and so they are equal. Root not 1 is null and root 2 is null. we would return true. On the other hand, if one of them is null but not the other, this means that one is an empty tree and the other one is not empty, so they are definitely not equal, so we need to return false. 
So if one of them is equal to null, so if root one is equal to null or root two is equal to null, then we would return false. On the other hand, if none of them is equal to null, this means that these are two trees which are not empty. So the first thing we need to do is to verify the values of the root nodes. So if they are different, we can directly return false. So if root one value is different from root two value, we would return false. But if they are equal, what we need to do is to check whether the left subtrees are equal and then whether the right subtrees are equal. So we can directly return whether r equal root one left and root two left and whether r equal root one right to root two right. And this is the whole function. Let's verify that it actually works by running through an example. So we have again the two trees we've seen before. We call this function r equal passing in the root of the first tree, so 1, and the root of the second tree, 1. So root 1 will be 1 and root 2 will be 1. So here we will indicate nodes in the first tree, so tree 1, and here we will indicating nodes in the second tree. We begin with root 1 set to 1 for the first tree and root 2 set to also 1, but this is the one of the second tree. So they are not null, none of them is null. The value of the roots are equal, so we go here and we check whether they are equal root 1 left. The left of 1 is 2 and the left of the 1 in the second tree is also 2. So we are back here, we call the function recursively, and again, none of them is null, they have the same value, so again, we would call r equal passing in the left child of root 1, uh, the left child of the 2 in the first tree is 4, and the left child of the 2 in the second tree is also 4. This will be the left. Again, we are back here, they are not null, they have the same value, we move again to the left of root 1. Now this time the left of 4 in the first tree is null and the left of 4 in the second tree is also null. So when we check this condition whether root 1 is equal to null or root 2 is equal to null, this evaluates to true and we would return true because in fact we have two empty trees and they are equal. So for 4 would receive a true from the left side. And once this returns true for the 4, we would move to the right. So the right of root 1, so this time root 1 is 4, so the right of 4 is null. And the uh, right of root 2, which is also 4, and the second tree is also null. So we would again hit this case, so this is true. And because this is also true, this evaluates to true, so we return true. And 4 was the left of 2. Now once left of 2 returns true, we move to the right of 2. In both cases we have 5. Again, they're not null. They have the same value. We move to the left of 5. In both cases it's null, so we, this is true. Then we move to the right in both cases again is null, so again we get a true, and this evaluates to true for the 5. So again we got the left true and the right true, and 5 returns true, and 5 was the right of 2. Once the right of 2 returns true, 2 returns true, and 2 was the left of 1. And once the left of 1 returns true, we move to the right of 1. In both cases we have a 3. They are not null, they have the same value. So we move to the left of 3. In both cases, we have null and null, so we have we get a true. So true from the left, then we move to the right of the two threes. 
In both cases, we have a 6 and a 6. So they're not null. They have the same value. So we move to the left. In both cases, we have a 7. So they're not null. They have the same value. So we check, are the lefts of trees equal? The left of the seven in the two cases are null, so we get a true from the left. And the right of both of them is also null, so again we have to get a true. So this evaluates to true for the seven. So seven, which was the left of six, returns true. And once the left of six returns true, we move to the right of six. In both cases we have null, so we hit again this case, so this is true. And so this evaluates to true for the six, and six returns true to the three, which it was the right of three. So this evaluates to true for the three, so three returns true, and three was the right of one. And at this point, once the right of one returns true, one would return true, indicating that the two trees are equal. If at any point we would found uh, that the two nodes are not equal, say, if instead of the 7 here we had an 8, if this was an 8, so this was an 8, then when we would, they would not be null, but then when we would compare the values of the two roots, we would get that they are different because 7 is not equal to 8, so we return false. And so we would get, six would get a false from the left, and so this would short circuit to false for the six. So six would return false, and six was the right of three. Once the right of three returns false, this evaluates to false for the three, and it returns false. And then what does the right of one? And once the right of one returns false. So this would evaluate to false for the one, so one would return false, indicating that the two trees are not equal. Or let's say that what we had is we had uh, an extra node. We had, for example, here an eight. So when we would call, uh, when we move to the right of six, which would be in the first tree would be eight, but in the second tree would be null. And we would hit the case where one of them is null, but not the other. So this would not happen because they're not both null, but one is null, root two is null, so we would return false. And again, that whole chain would go all the way up. So we would have a false from the right of one, and we would return false. And again, this handles, therefore, cases where the two trees are not equal because as soon as we find two nodes which have different values or we find a tree that has a node and the other doesn't have a node then we also would return false so this handles properly the cases where the two trees are not equal so let's now analyze the time complexity Let's indicate the sizes of the two trees as m and n, where m is less than or equal to n. In the worst case, the tree with size m will have all of its m nodes equal to the first m nodes of the tree with size n. So we will end up comparing m nodes. If you look at this function, the comparison of the nodes happens at this line here. And because we will need to compare m nodes, this means that this function will be called m times. And with m times, we will end up here. The two values will be equal, so we do not return false. Instead, what we do, we call this function recursively, going to the left and then going to the right. So there will be two calls, and the total number of times we end up here is m. This means that in total, the number of calls will be 2m. m of those times we end up here, and the amount of work we do is constant. So that's all of m work.
whereas the remaining number of times, which is 2m minus m, which is simply m, we either exit here or here. Now, if we were to exit here, we would return false and we would stop. But we instead, if we instead exit here, we would return true and we would continue. So in the worst cases, we're saying we would compare all m nodes. So we would keep returning true in order to continue. So this means that m times we would have root 1 equals to null and root 2 equals to null. And this in fact happens if we look at our trees here. For example, the node 4 in both have the left and right child's null, so we would hit this case. The same happens for 5, for the right child of the 6, for the left child of 3, and so on. So this is a constant amount of work. If you do it m times, it's all of m work in total. So the time complexity would be all of m plus all of m, which is all of m. And because m is uh, less than or equal than n, we can simply say that the time complexity will be the minimum of n1 and n2, where n1 is the size of the first tree and n2 is the size of the second tree. Let's now analyze the space complexity. Because we have a function that calls itself recursively, the space complexity will depend on how big will the call stack grow. Because every call we either move to the left or to the right, so we go one level deeper, we will keep doing this until we hit a leaf node in either of the two trees. Because in that case, the next call we do, we would have the children of the leaf node null, so we would hit either this case or this case, and so the functions would start returning. So the question is, in the worst case, how many calls there will be? It will simply be the minimum of the heights of the two trees. So the space complexity is of the minimum between h1 and h2. You can find the link to the code in the description below.